Dan Perry back with you, and this is part 23 of our TCPIP basic series. We're still looking at the OSI model, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at our TCP headers. We're going to look at the header and describe some of the more important parts of that header. Now, a TCP connection, or TCP is a uh, transport layer connection, or protocol, it is connection oriented in that it provides reliable communications. We know if the other end received our packet, we know if there are any errors, and we can control the speed at which that the uh, transmission occurs. Now looking at the header that's encapsulated or that encapsulates our data, we have a number of fields, many of which we really don't care about unless we're using those or in a lot of detail, uh, but there are a number of very important fields that we need to worry about. Uh, there's a source and a destination port. Each of those are 16-bit values, and we will uh, look at those in more detail a little bit later. There's a sequence and acknowledgement number. These are 32-bit numbers, and the sequence and acknowledgement numbers are used to make sure that all the data was received, if it was received out of order, to put it back in order, uh, so that we know that data was received and received correctly. We have an offset. There's some reserved areas. Then there are eight uh, fields or eight bits that are used for flags to indicate things about this uh, transmission, this, se uh, this segment. Um, of which there are really three that are important to us. Uh, that is the sin or synchronization, the fin or finish, and the act or acknowledgement. Those three flags will tell us about the communications. It helps us set up the communication. It helps us tear down the communications. Uh, next, we have a 16-bit field that's the window size, and by adjusting this window size, we tell the other end how much information to send at a time. So we can adjust the speed at which the other station uh, that we're communicating with sends data. You increase that window size, and you say, okay, send me more data. You decrease it, and basically you're telling them, slow down, I can't handle the data as quickly. Uh, checksum uh, is for error checking. Uh, there's a, uh, an urgent pointer uh, that can be used to uh, adjust the priority of traffic through routers. Then there are fields for uh, options. There may not be any options. If there are options, um, those options will be here. If the options... Uh, all of the options together do not end up to be an even multiple of 32 bits. What we do is we add some padding to the end so that we have even multiples of 32 bits in our header. Now, ports. Ports are 16-bit numbers. They indicate the application within a communication or within a computer that's using this communication stream. So there are would be a port that your web browser is using. There's a port for the web server. Uh, if we're doing file transfer protocol, there's ports that are used for FTP on each end. Um, if you think of uh, sending messages through the mail in an envelope, the ports would like be like a person's name on the envelope. So if you sent me a letter where you put Dan Perry, that would be my, the port that you're sending it to. In your return address, you would have your name. That would be your source port. So once the letter gets to my house, then my name on it says, hey, this letter is for me. Now, there are a number of well-known ports. These ports have specific purposes, and anytime you see that port being used, you know that, what type of service is using that port. Uh, ports are 16-bit values, so that gives us numeric values of 0 to 65, 535. 
the well-known ports number 0 through 1,023. Well, no, not every number between a Z 0 and 1,023 are actually used, but all of the well-known ports are in that range. From 1024 to 49151, we have what are called registered ports. Registered ports, many of those numbers say, okay, if you see this particular port number, well, this is the application that usually uses it. Uh, an, a, a, an application called VNC uses port 5900, for example. Well, because it, it's registered ports, you don't, you're not required to use those ports. Uh, any application can actually use them, but there are a few ports that are, you can almost say, well-known in that they typically use it. And then numbers starting at 49152 are called dynamic or private ports, and those are typically used by applications when they need a port number uh, for some reason, they just grab an unused port, although a number of applications will pull unused port numbers in that 1024 to 49151 range. Um, your web browser, for example, will use uh, one of these unregistered ports for its transmission, um, or it could use a, a registered port, but it, it will use one of these upper level 1024 up, the dynamic ports, a registered port, and each window you may have open, or each tab you may have open in a web browser, will have a different port number, so that tra as you're transmitting back and forth, when data is received back by your computer, the uh, computer can identify not only that it is going to your web browser, but to which window or tab in that web browser is using that one. Now, some of the well-known ports using you know services we're used to FTP for file transfer protocol that uses 21 Se secure shell is an encrypted um, text-based data transfer it uses 22 uh, when you um, send mail you use port 25 for simple mail transfer protocol whenever you need the IP address of a domain to send something or to, to request something from that domain. That's 53 for DNS. Uh, 80 is what we probably use more than anything else because that is the default port for uh, web servers. Uh, 110 is uh, POP or post office protocol. If you retrieve your uh, email through a uh, client such as Thunderbird, uh, there's a good chance it's using the POP protocol to download that email from the server. And then there are, there are a number of others in that well-known port range. Now, the registered ports, they really can be used by anything, uh, but some of them, again, are well-known, such as that VNC. Um, and there are a number of other services that typically use a specific port number in the registered range. Dynamic ports, again, anything, nothing will be typically well known there. Uh, your browsers and other uh, devices or, or applications that need a port number are supposed to pull from the dynamic, although they often pull from the registered ports instead. In, in our next video, we're going to continue looking at the headers and the other fields in our headers.